mean, the way I've been, the reception that I have, the way I've been treated, I mean, yeah, that's right. humbled and blessed, you know, everything about it, it's, it's yeah. unbelievable, it's just an amazing ride. Because you're amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was over 50 years before the Giants won their first World Championship, now you're part of two in three years, I mean, can you relate to that? I was a missing link. <laughs> no, it's, it's been amazing being here um, you know, with the organization the last four years, going on five now. Okay. And uh, like you said, you know, we the first year here as a head coach and again last year. Made it two of the three, so it's uh, quite an amazing ride. We have a great, great team, uh, great ownership, and um, most, first and foremost, uh, the best fans. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, in March 16th through the 18th, I think, we're going to be holding the W19. We're going to be holding the WBC, the semifinals, and the finals here. And that's the reason why Sergio is wearing this. And Sergio, obviously, is going to be representing Mexico. So. And Bam Bam is going to be managing the Netherlands. I mean, uh, <laughs> well, let, let me start with you. Charge, you, uh, Bam Bam. I mean, uh, tell me, I mean, how proud are you to, uh, have, first of all, have been asked to manage the team? Well, very proud. I think anytime you're asked to represent your country, it's um, it's a big deal. I think we don't we don't sit still and. Uh, and um, realize how important it is to be part of uh, a team that's going to go out and, and, and represent the country in a, in a big tournament like this. It's, it's actually the World Cup of Baseball. And, um, you know, Major League players are involved, Major League uh, coaches are involved, and it's only the third time ever that Major League players are playing against each other for the countries. And, you know, we're extremely proud and, and, and fortunate to be in this position to be able to go out and, and and um, you know, while we're in spring training, do something for our country, and hopefully uh, we'll be making it to the finals. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to get back watch to uh, welcome you guys to the 860 ESPN the fourth is stage. <laughs> this is the uh, this is the uh, official Spanish radio station for the Giants and. And uh, ever since the Giants moved to San Francisco, uh, Latin players have been a very part of uh, of the Giants. I mean, we're going to start our 32nd season broadcasting games in Spanish. And Sergio Romo is obviously one of many players that have worn the uniform. But again, being part of uh, Mexico, we make a big deal out of your Mexican heritage. And you can explain, I mean, how do you feel putting that uniform, I mean, showing off the Mexican flag right there in your... In your right arm, I mean, that's what we also, I mean, just right <laughs> now, so. uh, I mean, being born and raised, you know, Mexican, everything, and, and everything about, you know, uh, Latino, everything about it, I mean, very Water proud board. to <laughs> very, uh, uh, very proud to represent uh, Mexico and everything. Uh, it's my primo! Probably, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've been a long time to have my own um, uh, jersey Mexicana, you know, so uh, for me to be able to represent them and, and, you know, me being born in the States with Mexican parts and everything, so, uh, I mean, everything, all my roots go back to Mexico, so uh, to be able to put it on and, and, and wear it, I mean, that's green, white, and red. I've been one for a while. You know, I got the Aggie down on my back and everything. You know? yeah, it's kind of cool for me just to go out and finally, finally do, uh, get a chance to do it. He says it's a, it's a real privilege to get asked to, uh, to represent Mexico. It's a real privilege to, I mean, to just be in this position to, to, to be recognized, you know, as, as Mexicano. So everything about it, uh, it's, a, it's a real thought. Thank you. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Oh, wow. Happy. <laughs> For you, uh, did you get an opportunity to see that 18 inning game? Were you jumping up and down? I mean, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm definitely watching it. I, I don't know if y'all can uh, know, but you can see it on the internet and everything, so I was able to follow that on myself on the internet. Uh, it's real funny because uh, 
I mean, once they hit the home run, Clark hit the home run, he come down, he cross the plate, he gets the jersey, kisses it, points up, and that, that, I definitely can't wait to do that myself. Ah. So uh, everything about it, just proud, just proud of it. Uh, I mean, dollars are coming up straight up. Obviously, again, uh, we know that it's an honor to to represent a country to be asked, but uh, baseball obviously wants to get to to this being the, the World Cup of Baseball. What are the things that, that you see that we need to do to get to that to that level? Well, first of all, Major League Baseball has done a great job uh, going worldwide and. and um, sponsoring a lot of different um, federations in, in their countries. I know um, for us in Holland, uh, you know, they're, they're very active. Just two weeks ago, they um, sponsored a uh, uh, new brand new stadium that's going to be a major league type stadium that can hold major league games um, for the first time ever in Europe. And, you know, that's, that's how they, you know, they're branching out. They're going all over the place. You know, as you, can, you guys can see in this classic, Spain is going to be participating, you know, we thought Spain could only play soccer. Brazil is going to be participating, we thought they only play soccer. And, you know, you have um, Italy participating, we thought they only play soccer. And we have the Dutch participating, we thought they only play soccer. So, but, you know, we, we beat the Dominican twice in the last classic to go to the second round. That was a big surprise and, um, you know, I'm sure there'll be more surprises this, this classic, but you know, we we as a uh, you know baseball fans, you know we gotta we gotta come out and support this tournament. You know, I think it's a it's a it's a, it's a big way to show that you know we support world baseball and and you know it's every four years and you know you, you get to see the best players uh, participating in this tournament for their motherland and trying to to win a championship for the for their home country. Are there any players that we have heard of that are playing for the Netherlands? Yes, um, we have a, a group of young players that are coming up. Um, we don't have that many major league players, but we do have uh, Andrew Jones, who's um, been in the major league for the last 17 years. He's our best known player. Uh, we have Roger Benedetto that's going to play center field. He plays for the Washington Nationals. We have Allerton Simmons, he's going to play shortstop. He's the shortstop for the Braves. Uh, we have the number one prospect in all of baseball, just chosen uh, two weeks ago. Drew Exum Profar, he's a, a young uh, uh, shortstop for the Texas Rangers. He's going to play second base. Uh, we have Jair Jurgens, who's a pitcher. Uh, he was with the Braves and with the Orioles. Now he just signed with the Orioles. We have Kelly Jansen, who's a closer for the Dodgers. He's going to be playing for us. So we have uh, a few known guys that are in the major leagues um, and a few guys that are prospects on their way to the major leagues. So Sergio, you pitched to the biggest stage in, in Basel, which is the, the World Series. Uh, how do you anticipate your your reaction, your emotions are going to be when you throw your first pitch wearing the Mexican uniform? Well, I know who I'm going to be. I'm going to be overwhelmed. I mean, I, I've been waiting for this for a while. Uh, an opportunity to represent Mexico, it's, it's one of those things where I thought I'd like to be doing as a youngster, uh, but never really got a chance to. Uh, I mean... <laughs> We got some surprises coming. You know, we're ready for this year. You know, uh, I mean, personally, I've prepared myself well this off season so that when I jump into the classic, you know, I can just go in and just be myself and, and be able to put forth a real good effort. Uh, I understand, you know, the gente, you know, la raza, they got my back. You know, they've always had my back. So. <laughs> Very proud. I can't wait. I really, really can't wait. Uh, I mean, being able to pitch in the two World Series now, just let alone the playoffs, let alone just being able to pitch in the big leagues. I mean, obviously, how proud I am to do that. Wear the orange and black. Just imagine how much it looks like a little bit more. You know, because like, it's just, it's just my dad. You know, I represent my dad, my grandparents. You know, uh, you know, all my family and everything. So I'm able to, I'm able to wear it. It means a lot to me. It really does. Well. Spring training is well, starting to start next week, but uh, let's we'll talk about 2013. I mean, it seems like the same team that won the World Series is the same team that's coming back. Is it easy to say that back to back this year? Yeah. 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 Right. Well,
Well, every year is different, and I think Coach put it best yesterday. He said, you know, we we had a couple of months to enjoy uh, 2012, enjoy the World Series, enjoy the win. You know, guys are all over the place, guys with their families. Uh, but uh, starting tomorrow, when we leave here tonight, and, and some of us are leaving tomorrow, getting down to spring training in Arizona, uh, it's time to go back to work. And you go back to work by preparing for the upcoming season. And uh, that means we have to forget about 2012 for, for the time being and, and start working on uh, putting a winning season together for 2013. We have the same thing, like you said. Um, you know, the pitching staff is intact. You know, the whole entire lineup is coming back. Um, you know, we're excited. We're excited to start the, the, the spring uh, next week and uh, uh, see what we can do and, and, and hopefully bring back uh, another championship to the city. So going back to work, what are the things that you feel that you need to work on, Sergio? Oh, uh, I mean, for me personally, I don't stand very tall, so I kind of feel like I set that bar kind of high. I kind of got to jump up to get it down. Uh, but for me personally, I just got to keep improving. You know, being, you know keep eating, uh, how do you say, keep making uh, quality pitches. You know, keep being aggressive. You know, keep that mindset that uh, although. Uh, Although I've achieved a lot at this point, and not just me personally, but you know, as part of the Giants, we've been all able to achieve a lot. So uh, we, we got to stay hungry. You know that mentality, stay aggressive. And uh, I mean, we still got a lot to prove. There's still question marks about us now. You know, uh, how, like he said, Bochy did put it best yesterday when he said, you know, we had two months with this group of guys. Imagine what we can do as a whole uh, for a whole season. You know, and how close we were able to get and everything. And how. How literally how strong of a team we were. We may not be the most talented guys, but we don't really get the credit for being that talented anyway. We really haven't looked at West Coast baseball that way, period. So, oh, you uh, got talent. Come on, you got talent. Talent. But they don't, you know, we haven't really gotten that, that credit, you know, so now it's out to put those questions to rest. You know, oh, they're lucky, they're lucky. What does luck have to do with it now? We, we work hard, you know, we put forth a lot of really good effort. Oh, yeah. Well you rather be lucky than good. Yeah. <laughs> in our reality, you need to go out and bounce away a little bit, but at the same time, when you're ready for that opportunity, then it is what it is. So you go out and you know, send some random out, and uh, it's, it's pretty cool when, uh, when they don't expect it. All right, so does anybody have any questions? Raise your hand, give me a time to get there with the microphone. So we're going to start right here. Uh, he, 
definitely is huge on respect, but uh, for me, I just kind of want to be like him. I always figured if I was half the dad he is to my sons, and that'd be an amazing dad. Uh, so, uh, in all reality, the kids, I just, anything is possible, legitimately, anything, you know, with those specifically, you know, doesn't matter how big you are, doesn't matter, doesn't matter really what you offer, it's self-worth is everything. You never lose confidence in yourself. Everybody here has a purpose. Find your purpose. And don't be afraid to show it and share it. Uh, for me, I was fortunate to find baseball. You know, I love baseball. Baseball is the most consistent thing in my life. So uh, I definitely have fun with it. Uh, you know, you, those who are trying to play the game and try to aspire to be, you know, major league baseball, uh, baseball players like myself and Batman was before. So those, it's still a game. Have fun and enjoy. Uh, everything about it, you know, smile goes a long ways. And uh, <laughs> you never know. You know, your smile may brighten up someone else's day. It makes it, you know, that much better than him. And I figure happiness is the key to everything. So find it. Viva México.
me to go out and I mean, everyone sees my dad with so much respect back home and everyone treats my whole family with respect and that's before I made it to this level, uh, before I feel that I was somebody in this world. Uh, my dad told me once, uh, never take for granted what you always knew was achievable, never attainable. Meaning, how many people lived this big league life before me? So many big leagues before me. So, it's achievable, of course, but attainable, that was up to me. It was up to me to go out and put in the work and put in the effort and literally commit myself to something that I honestly feel that I could do. And, uh, I mean, I feel like a little kid. <laughs> I, really do. I, I really can't believe that everything this is happening. I, mean, I really can't believe still that this is my life and I got five years in the league now. So, uh, I mean, I feel like a little kid when I'm playing the game. It, it, it's it's sort of fun for me to sit and say, okay, if I have a rough outing or something, I'm like, man, I didn't do so hot. I mean, I didn't, man, I didn't, I kind of gave up a hit today. I gave up a couple of runs, but I gave up a couple of runs in the big league. So, for me, uh, it's just the fact that this is really baseball is really the only place that I actually feel like I'm somebody. I feel that I have self, more self-worth than the next. So uh, why not just show kids the same thing, show people that I, I do appreciate this because, uh, I mean, at any given day, this can be taken away. And I definitely don't want this right now, that's for sure. Well, keep up the good work. Yeah. Six innings, I'm a fan. You know, I get to enjoy that the talent for my teammates. You know, uh, they show you guys, and I'm up here interacting and stuff. And they all make it more fun. Behind Amy G. You know, jumping, you know, all the commentaries, the announcers, and stuff like that. Um, you know, so everything about it, I, I get to just, I feel like I'm somebody. I really feel that I can relate with just about everybody here, and I, I feel that uh, through baseball. <laughs> It's a game, and through a game, I can feel this way. And uh, I mean, why not just share it with the rest of the world? So uh, I, I honestly believe that uh, you know, it just gets interactive. Uh, it's really, really fun for me. Now, this to find, uh, um, what would your advice be for somebody who's in a swamp? Yeah. And the other one is, what would your advice be for them? Oh! <laughs> So, first of all, I think when, when when the times are rough, you gotta simplify things. Things it, it, it's, it's very easy to be hard on yourself and kick the ball, snowball it down, down the hill. So, um, my approach with the guys always is to simplify things, do less. Sometimes you try so hard to do good, and if that doesn't work. You know, it's, it's to stay grounded, do less work, um, you know, just try to play pepper with the ball. You know? <laughs> Other times you try to swing harder and you know, you, and you make it worse. And, and, and there is a few keys to, to every hitter to try to get him out of slumps or try to, you know, get him back on track. And, um, you know, it could be different for each guy. That's me knowing my, my personnel, knowing Buster, knowing Bell, knowing Pagan, knowing Pablo, knowing them all separately, what works for them is what, you know, first of all, I have to have a good relationship with them so they can trust me when I tell them something. And then when I tell them something, they go out and do it. So that's the key to, you know, coming out of the slump is to, you know, do less, do less, and, uh, and, and, and keep it simple. Keep it simple and go back to basics. Every time, you know, it could be a minor thing that, that puts you in slump, and it could be a minor thing that gets you back out of So that's, that's, that's it. Roma's approach, I think. I shouldn't say that right now. I'm gonna have to face him in, like, in two weeks, you know? But I'll tell you anyways, I think, you know, it's it's hard to hit a slider because it has so much spin and so much deception to it because of his, you know, delivery. But, you know, guys, you can see great hitters struggle 
against Romo because they don't pick up the ball. And even though when they pick up the ball, they don't know when to swing because of it's 79 miles an hour, honestly. Yeah. You know? So <laughs> now think about this. You just faced, let's say, um, FL was throwing 93 miles an hour, you know, and then Roma comes in, he's slipping 79 up there, you know, and you, it's hard to time it and, and, and say, hey, this is a strike and, and, and get after it. But for me, I think if I was hitting, I would look for the ball that's right at me that you think is going to hit you, that's the one that's going to break you and play for a strike, right? If I'm seeing the ball in the middle of the plate or farther away from me, I, I'm going to think about faking because that ball is going to break off the plate. That's one approach, but then it might be a fastball, so you, know, you don't know it wrong. You never know it wrong. He's so tough. Yeah, I'm, I, we love that he's on our ball. A little different, I'll say that. Hi, Romo. Um, this is Rima over here. <laughs> So I, I just want to say congratulations on the win. And thank you. And I just got engaged. I'll send you the invitation. <laughs> 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 I will be reporting to spring training soon, so uh, maybe I can make it, maybe I can't, you never know. Uh, but wow, congratulations and good luck. I just want to say I love you, Sergio, first, but my question is for Vietnam. Who's going to be the power hitter or hitters in 2013 and will want to be the All right, um, I think the obvious, you know, the middle of the lineup is the guys that, you know, should be providing the power. And you can start with Pablo hitting third. Yeah. You know, you can the MVP. You know, we expect him to be the same, if not better. Um, we expect Pablo to be at full strength and not miss any games this year because of injuries. You know, he's, we don't have any more handmates. <laughs> you know, we expect him to be at there. And that pants, you know, he's the guy that is going to hit behind Buster probably. You know, this is a guy that consistently hit 25 home runs over the last four or five years in his career, and driving 90 to 100 runs. So he's, those three guys are, you know, the power providers in our lineup. and. You know, we're very patient with Bell. You know, he's got power, he's, he's learning on the fly. This guy only played a year and a half in the minor leagues, yeah. and we put him in the big leagues, and he's done great. Yeah. As far as, you know, his, his age, his experience in the league, and, you know, you gotta be patient with these guys until they hit their strike. You know, sometimes you get spoiled um, when you get Pablo coming up here and hit it 25 or not right away. You get Buster coming up here and then we'll give the year and hit 20, 25 or not right away. But some of these other guys, you know, you have to be patient until they, they learn how to use the power at the major league level. And that's what we did with the belt. You know, we, we stuck with him because he's a great defender. You know, and, and, and at the end of the day, you know, he's, he's got a great eye that, that produced a very high base percentage, you know, and, and, and he hit 330 the last month and a half of the season. So those are little baby steps taken, and before you know it, he'll be in the same category with the other three guys I mentioned. Every day, <laughs> or in the cage, in the cage. I'll go and I hit off the tee every day. It's kind of part of my warm-up routine. Yeah. Uh, but does that translate into the game? 
Now over five with five. Over five because I did bet in the playoffs this past year. It was Christ in '96. Can't really see that fast. Um, <laughs> oh, he, like, he lifts his leg and you start your swing. His swing now type of thing. Um, in other words, I should have swung yesterday to hit that ball today. Um, uh, but I'm over five. Uh, my first at bat in the big leagues was in uh, 2008 and faced Jake Peavy, who was at that time the reigning uh, NL Cy Young award winner. And I'm sorry, I just can't really see the ball. Um, I'm not trained to hit. Uh, there's a reason why they took the bat out of my hand in college. <laughs> it wasn't just because I was that much better as a pitcher. Uh, but no, I, yes, I, I, I do hit, just not very well. <laughs> Same for First of all, congratulations to you both and all your success. Uh, it's been a pleasure to run with you your career and uh, how you've grown. I'd just like to know what's the biggest thing you've learned about yourself, step, having stepped into the closer position and uh, filled that role. Biggest thing. The biggest thing that I've learned really is that I can do it. Uh, I feel now that I do belong in the major leagues. I do feel that I'm a quality major league pitcher. From the middle of August on, you know, I, I question, not necessarily question if I can do it, but I question my own self-worth and my own abilities on the mound. And since then, that was when my teammates 100% showed me the confidence and the faith that they had in me to be that guy. Uh, there was no time to worry about my fears or no worry about and my, ins my own insecurities. It was, it was ready to go. My team needed me to be good. They needed me to step into a bigger role than I thought I could play. And they never backed off from that. You know, there were times where it wasn't that great, but I was still able to get the job done because I was able to look around and every single one of them, let's go, let's go, you got it, you know? You know, you're the man. I'm like, I'm the man. I'm the man. I'm like one of the smaller guys on the team, you know? So uh, it's just the fact that in all reality that I belong in this league, uh, I really, really do, and I mean, this year, that's why I'm excited about this season, and to, and, uh, you know, Coach, you told me, you know, what he said yesterday, I'm going to get, you know, I'm going to get the lion's share of the, of the saves, you know, I'm going to come in this season as a pro, so, yeah. I'm excited, yeah. I'm excited for that opportunity, uh, I got a chance to do it for a month and a half, and then I the playoffs in there, and, uh, why can't I not believe it, I can do it, and I have all three You can do it! Congratulate you guys. I enjoy watching you. I've been a Giants fan my whole life. I would like to know what's the importance of having a stud like Buster Posey behind the plate when we lost him in 2011. You know what I'm saying? What's the difference with him back there compared to somebody else? Well, I mean, you look at Buster, I get guys I can, I'm sorry, they don't just come every day. But, uh, he is an amazing human being off the field as well. He has, I know he's not very uh, outspoken and, and he's not very loud at all. He's a true professional. It's like that guy was born and there was like a certain glow about him. Uh, and from the moment I've got a chance to play alongside him, he's younger than I. I mean, by like three years, two, three and a half years, and he is more professional than I am already. He is already more, how do you say, grown up, more mature than I am. Uh, he, he commands the respect. That, I mean, he just walks in, he's like, oh, Buster, he's like, Buster, you have to say hi to the guy. Uh, he's very manful, he's very respectful. He minds his, uh, he minds his own business at the same time. He cares and, and is very willing to give you a shoulder and, and give you some advice when you approach him. You know, he's not a guy who understands his boundaries, and he's super duper smart. Uh, I mean, he is beyond smart, but a very intelligent human being, and very knowledgeable of the game. Uh, I don't know if you guys know, but he was a shortstop before. You know? yeah. And he also closed at the end of the college. So for him just to understand who he is and his own abilities and be able to apply that to us and just show us, hey, man, I know what I'm doing. And, uh, I mean, huge impact. When we lost him in 2011, I think that was pretty much the breaking point yeah. of our season. Uh, I know we had some other injuries that year. There was, you know, Freddie Sanchez, you know, and uh, I mean, Aubrey wasn't the same, you know. So, uh, so I mean, you, you look at everything about that, it's like, man, 
how really important is that guy? Well, he showed us all year long what he can do and what he means to our team when we have him for a full season. A lot of folks didn't expect him to be able to play. I think he played 150 or 150 games behind the plate. And like, wow, you know, and, and this coming off that crazy injury, but he, unbelievable human being. Very, 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 very special person. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, um, I want to congratulate, I'm over here, I want to congratulate you guys on um, winning two World Series in three years again, and my question, I have two questions um, for each of you, um, for Sir Mullins, um, when you were uh, managing the Bravos and Margarita in, in the Venezuelan League, um, and you were also still here with these games. How did you like manage your time that way, like being able to pay attention to both at the same time? And how were you? I heard that you were like sending in your um, lineups from here. How were you able to do that when you weren't able to be at the games? And then Sergio, are you ever going to play in the Mexican league again? Oh. <laughs> did you get that? Did you get that? Well, I think when you have multiple jobs, I just say, and um, I was busy with. The most important thing, the priority, which is the Giants and the World Series, and you know most of your time going to that. And but in the mornings, um, once I woke up, it was a three-hour difference in Venezuela, so I would um, contact my bench coach down there and you know talk over the previous game and you know let him know what I wanted to play, and then he would um, advise me of guys that you know weren't doing so hot, so. You know, we we go back and forth over you know a couple things, and then I'll you know throw in my my grain of salt and, and try to tell them you know who I want to play. So and it worked out all right. Um, so once I got there as a world champion, and guys were like, okay, so you're here, so now you can uh, make your own lineup, write it out. And, but I still have the bench coach, just like. Ron Waters does with those here, write everything up, put it on the board, and you still have that job, but I just can't understand it. Yes. So it was a lot of internet and a lot of uh, Skyping. That's what's up. Um, yeah, I do plan on playing in, Mex uh, in the Mexican Winter League again. Uh, I hope I don't really have to play in the Mexican Summer League again because I'll be here in San Francisco. Uh, but uh, when it comes to the Winter League, yeah, I do plan on playing again. Uh, it's just, you know, you could choose the right time to do it. Uh, at this point, uh, my, this is the main event of my career this season. Uh, this, is, this is really an opportunity to establish myself. And you raise a lot of questions and, and, and turn away a lot of doubters. So. Uh, that's why I didn't play this year. Uh, I will also press the World Series to really help. I was a little tired after that. Um, <laughs> emotionally, of course, physically, I can keep going, but and you really don't want to push yourself that, uh, that much, you know, because this is what's more important for me. This is what, you know, feeds my sons and, and my family. So, uh, I mean, do I plan on playing? Yes. I just don't exactly know why. Thank you. Congratulations, guys. Thank you. Um, Romo, how hard was it for you to take over that closer position? 